Joseph Ojo Kualokere is my name, the project manager of C&D Alito Training Center. Here, we train the young people and farmers the basic skill in agribusiness. In this episode, I'm still introducing in a very simple technology that is easy to adopt by a farmer and when you practice you can maximize profit from the little resources through the acquired skill from C and D you will have a sustainable livelihood. Our production here is more of organic. We do encourage organic farming. So today I want to share with you how to make uh, organic liquid manure. And uh, this organic liquid manure is what we always use because it doesn't take time to make. It needs local available materials. Like in front of me here, I have the different uh, animal waste that I'm going to use for making organic liquid manure like here this is the rabbit waste i have here the rabbit waste we have the poultry droppings the chicken waste and plus the turkeys and the ducks the waste materials are here and this is fresh pig waste and we have the fresh cow dung so these materials can give you a very good quality organic liquid manure but there are some other materials that you need to have when you are making organic liquid manure, like take for example, we have you need to have a bucket, you need to have a container that will that will help you to make the manure, and then you need to have the stick. Eh? This stick will help you to suspend the material that you have prepared inside the bucket, and the rope. You need to have a rope to tie the material on the stick and suspend it inside here and you should also have water because you want to make liquid out of these materials you need to have water available and then we also need stone eh? at least some stone because these materials they are light they cannot submerge completely in the water oh, no, no, no. you put here powder uh -huh. right. So this cow dung is enough, then you add a big, a big waste, here, here, okay. big waste, you add big waste, you put chicken waste, mm -hmm. and rabbit waste in the, same, in the same sack. So these are animal waste from different sections, you mix it properly. You can see now the material are mixed properly. Then now after doing this, you put inside the stone. This stone will help to make the material sink in the water. Huh? You tie the sack. very well like this uh -huh. and then you use the stick make sure you also fix the stick in order to to suspend this material in the container uh -huh. you tie it properly because it is going to be heavy <coughs> You have a bucket and you put it there. See, this is animal waste packed in the bag. You put it in the in the bucket. Do not make it to reach the bottom. Eh? Let it be in the middle, but make sure it is under the shade. Simply because when the material is being prepared, when the liquid is being prepared and the sunshine is hot, there is tender inside the content to evaporate, you will find most of the nutrient has already evaporated. 
So you add water. Make sure the sack is completely submerged inside the water. Aha, uh -huh, this one is enough. Now, here you can see you have really completed the, the first process of making the liquid manure. You cover the sack properly. So you see, this is what you are going to do. The liquid part of animal waste will get into the water and that one will, we call it liquid manure. So in this way, you will have made the manure within a short period of time. Instead of decomposing, eh, decomposing the animal waste for like two, three months, when you are still waiting for the, the compost manure. With the compost manure, it takes more time, but this one takes one week and it will be ready for use without any harmful effects onto the, the vegetables. The quantity will be determined by the size of your bucket, size of your container. If you have a small container, make sure you put a, a small quantity which can fit inside there. If you have a big container, you can put like that. You can even put one sack if you have a big drum. So after every two days, you come and shake like this. You see that? So such that you will be in position to allow the liquid part of the material to get into the water. As it gets into the water, it will be leaving the nutrient as well. If you are alone, you can come and do like this. You can do it on a daily basis every evening or after two days. After two days, you come and shake. In seven days, you will find your liquid manure is ready for use. When you are using this liquid manure, you need to know that it is concentrated. When you use it like this, the way it is, it may have the effects on your plant. And number two, make sure when you are adding, let's say you are adding to a seedling that has just been transplanted, do not allow it to pour on the leaves. The manure is concentrated, so you need to dilute huh? a ratio of one to four or one to five, depending on how long it has stayed. If it has stayed too long, make sure you can you dilute in a ratio of one to five or one to six because you find it is more concentrated. I mean one cup of concentrated liquid, eh? you will add four cups. Eh? You will add four cups of fresh water. Three and four. Eh? This tomato, we added liquid manure immediately after transplanting. And it has taken one month and some days now. So it is flowering, we need to top dress. We need to add more nutrients because it is at the flowering stage and fruit formation. So this is now the mixture of liquid manure. Eh? In a ratio of one to four, one cup of concentrated liquid you mix with the four cups of water and then you pick one cup of the mixture and put per plant so you can see one cup per plant yes you can see it goes down below the mulch and it is there conserved as you so very very simple method you have done top dressing
at this point the tomato has completed flowering and it is at the stage of fruit development of which you have to be very vigilant be very careful visiting the farm regularly because you'll find there are so many the branches which are not well supported they are hanging and they start breaking as the fruit develops to bigger size so you make sure that you keep on supporting them carefully and uh, you have to continue with other agronomic practices like at this point now spraying should be to prevent some of the pests that may attack the fruits uh, make sure that uh, there is a, a sufficient water that the plant will absorb and sufficient nutrients people think we always take photos we, we, we always download photos from internet eh, showing the top good quality tomatoes but this one is directly from our demonstration you see there is nothing difficult there is nothing so complicated only you need to dedicate yourself when you have the skill you can do it eh? you can make it as well <laughs> unbelievable you can see this is chandra moki and this is only one cluster i mean two clusters you can see the number of fruits and the quality fruits which has emerged from this one stem Wow, this is really, really, really beautiful. It is really beautiful as you can see. <laughs> you can really smile if the, your effort is seen like this. Who can imagine that this is dry season? You can't imagine. This is African eggplant and also you can see it is starting to flower. Look at the quality of the flowers that are coming and the quality of the fruits. This is due to best agronomic practice.